Hey, this is Lance, your Sacramento private and process server. Doing a little process server training. Process server training. Are you a process server? Do you want to become a process server? Do you want to get paid to deliver legal papers? Well, I can teach you how to be a process server. I got little beeps going on. I can teach you how to become a process server. Right now we're to our location to go and uh, serve a couple businesses. So I'm gonna wait till some people get on here. How you doing? How's it going over here on uh, Tiki Tot? Tiki talk, what's going on? We on our way. You ready for some process server training? Some process server, what's going on? Tiki talk, process server training. If you don't know me, my name is Lance and I'm in California, in Sacramento, California. And I am a private investigator and a process server. And I get paid to deliver legal papers. People ask me, what does a process server do? And uh, what, what is, what's the purpose of a process server? So basically, when somebody files an action in court, you have to, the other party has to be notified of that action. And that's called service of process. So, what will happen, let's say you go want to sue somebody, you'll go file your small claims paperwork with your local court, and then you got to get, get the other party served. And so you could hire the sheriff's department or anybody over the age of 18 that's not a party to the case. And I just want to get this one a little disclaimer. This is not legal advice. I am not an attorney. I'm a private investigator and a process server, and I'm just sharing what my experiences are. Okay, so that legal advice is out the way. So you file the court, you take the small claims court, you get the paperwork, then they gotta be served. You can go to your local sheriff, but the sheriff is so busy now, they may take three weeks to, to a month if they even do service or process anymore. So that's why you, you can hire a process server. And so, like the cases that we've got today, people found us online and they're serving, one of them is a business and the other one is a, a family trust, but they're serving a business to get some records. So it's it's, it's some records that we're, we're, we're subpoenaing. And so they hire a process server, so they email me a copy of the documents with instruction who's being served and where. And then I will email them an invoice and then they pay the invoice, I'll print the documents up, make a file, put the, the data into my process server software and then I'll go out and serve the documents. So today we're serving just two. We've got a the two location. California when a business a business does business if it's a corporation or LLC to identify an agent for service of process. So if you form a corporation, you gotta identify an agent for service of process. Service of process is getting notified that you're involved in a lawsuit. So we're going to a company called a corporation service company doing business as CSC Lawyers Incorporating Service here in Sacramento. They're a, a, a 1505 corporation, which means that they have registered their business to act as a registered agent for service of process. So if you form a corporation and you need a registered agent, you can hire CSC lawyers to be your registered agent. And if somebody's suing you or subpoenaing records from you, then the you would serve the registered agent who would then forward the documents over to the company itself. So an example would be, I get these a lot, somebody is suing Airbnb. Airbnb's registered agent is Corporation Service Company doing business as CSC lawyer. So they would hire me to deliver the documents to Corporation Service Company, who would then 
forward them over to Airbnb. So when we go into Corporation Service Company, they have a um, bunch of scanners. And so, you know, I'll deliver the documents and there's the people in the back scanning them in and then they forward that over to the company that they're representing. And so um, that's where we're on our way to right now. So as a process server, the hardest thing is getting clients, your own clients. And so I market towards this specific address that we're going to. That's so that so I get I'm here every day. Literally, I'm here every day delivering two or three. I just got four today that are that are, that are paid that I'm taking tomorrow. They missed the cutoff to go today, so I'm taking four of them tomorrow. And so, but we only got two today going to this location. And you know, as a process server, you got to have a website. You got to have a website. I mean, if you want to find your own clients, so you're gonna have to have a website. Um, I've got several. I've got several websites, and because I I niche market, I pick a specific location, and I build a website and build content around serving that location. So this address that we're going to is one of my niches. Because so, if you were to go into Google and type in CSC Lawyers Incorporating Service, you're gonna see my websites. You might even see my website even before the company's website shows up, literally. And I get calls every day thinking, from people thinking that I'm that company, but I'm not. And I convert some of those into actually paying clients. And so um, a, this, this location that we're going to is a 1505 corporation. And when they fill out that form and file it with the Secretary of State, they have to identify employees of the company that can actually accept the service of process. So if you have searched on the Secretary of State's website and you pull the 1505 certificate, it'll have a list of employees. And then those are the people that you're able to give the documents to that you're serving. This location, it's that, that person that's on that list is always at the front. There's usually like three or four people that are normally there. And so thank you for the likes, thank you for the likes. Usually three or four people that are normally there um, that are on that list of like 30, but it's the three people that are at the front. So this location, they have a, um, they created a, an online thing where your first first trip, you have to register your name, your business, and then your email address. So every time you go in, you log into their little system and it just shows that you were there. And um, so I just go in and type my name and it'll says, is this you with your email? I say, yeah, that's me and delivering documents. And then that the, the, the person that's accepting the service, they'll have their name placard on the front. So what I'll do is I'll just write that down and then I'll go back to my car once I'm done and I'll go onto my process server software onto my phone, log in the serve, and then that gets emailed to the client. It makes it simple. So I don't have to get calls from clients What's going on with my serve? Did you serve my documents yet? And I don't have to remember whether or not I served them. I just go log it in onto the, my software. And then when it comes time to fill out a proof of service form, because that's that's one of the things you gotta do as a process server, is you gotta fill out that proof of service form. And what that is, it notifies the court that the documents are served, the date and time served, address served, and the party that accepted the service. So like with a California Small Claims Court, um, proof of service form is an SC-104. That's the form number that is filled out. Um, but it, just about every kind of document that is served has its own unique proof of service form. So when you're, when you're a process server, you gotta know which one it is. And it, you know, I have a course to teach people how to, how to become a process server and I cover the forms that you have to fill out. Um, you know, the proof of service form is filled out for each individual type of document. And, and how I figured it out was trial and error. And filling out the wrong form and giving it to the client, they stand in line for two hours and go to the courthouse to file it. The judge, the, the clerk says, oh no, this is the wrong form. And you know, now they're calling you back mad. 
you know, because you gave them the wrong form and now they got to go back again and stand in line for two hours to file it again. So, you know, I've got, I know which ones need to be filled out. So if you ever thought about becoming a process server, um, you know, I, I wrote an ebook, how to become a process server. It covers basically all 50 states. If you're on YouTube, if you go down in my description, there's a link to the to the to my website where I'll give you a free copy of my ebook. And if you're on TikTok, if you click on my bio up there and go to my website, you, all I need is your email address, and you can get a free copy of my my ebook, how to become a processor. You know, because like these two, that like when I serve where I'm going right now, um, my fee to serve this location is $125, and it literally takes all of three minutes to walk in, drop the documents off, write their name down, fill out the little form on my phone, and then leave. You know, and that's it. And that's all this company does is take service to process. I've seen people walk in there with stacks like this. And I've had a couple of them where, you know, I've had a lot at one time to go. Um, but that's one of the benefits of you know, niche marketing for my process server business is finding locations that are and another example would be like a hospital. Like if somebody wanted to subpoena medical records from your local hospital, how do they do it? So if you figure out how it's done and if it's done in your area, you could create a website, make some videos about how to do that. And then so when people are going to Google and they'll type in how to subpoena records from this hospital, your information would pop up and then your contact information or a contact form on the website. And then you would then, they would hire you to go and actually serve those documents. So that's what I mean by a niche, like, you know, serving government agencies. Like if you have a government agency, like a Department of Motor Vehicles or a state agency or a local agency, how do the people serve those agencies? And you find that out and you create content. So, you know, when I'm saying content, it's like a website, like a blog post, uh, a YouTube video, uh, a Facebook post, Facebook videos, post on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and all those social media sites. Um, because the more content that you put online, the better it is for your business. I, mean, I don't know how you came across me to, to, to watch this video but you know I put a lot of content online about how to become a process server you know I, and I actually train process servers you know I have a process server training course that you could take that's online and the link is in the description or in my bio where, where the, the court the training course and then in that course you're gonna learn who to serve how to serve and how to fill out the paperwork that's the hardest part of the filling out the paperwork and knowing which one if you know with the, which paperwork is required for which kind of case um, and so uh, somebody on my websites I have what's called a, a chat feature and people that go on my website they can send me a chat request and somebody just information into my comp my process server um, software and the information is like the client's name address phone number their email address the case number the plaintiff and defendant the court name and address the um, party that's being served and sometimes it's different than the plaintiff or the defendant 
and then the address for service of process. And then the, the document types, you know, what are the documents that are being served? And I enter all that into my process server software. So when it comes time to filling out the proof of service form, that software has all the forms in there and it just pre-populates all that data. It makes it quick and easy. It makes it real quick and easy. And so, um, you know, anybody here? Hey, how you doing? How's it going? Let me see here. Hey, the ghost, what's going on? How you guys going? Anybody here, process servers, or thinking about it, comment, make a comment. Make a comment. Because we got here, and let me see what we got going now. Let me get what we got going here. Okay, this one's going to Vanguard, and then this one's going to CHBR Investments. A complaint and summons. So that's what we're serving today. Um, a complaint and summons. Okay, you're in London. Okay, good to see, good to see. Yeah, let's see here, anybody over here? Okay. Okay, so somebody just sent me a thing. Hey, Ray, oh, what's going on, Ray? But that, that text message just came through and they're asking about Paracorp, about serving Paracorp. So Paracorp is a 1505 corporation, just like Corporation Service Company is. And that's one of my niches. And so that's, I'm at, I don't have a website specifically built for Paracorp yet, but I have content on other websites about it. So what I'm going to do is actually build a website for serving Paracorp. And this is my little secret. This is what I do. Because when somebody's looking for something, they'll copy it from the Secretary of State's website and then paste it into Google. It'll be like Paracorp and their address. And then that's what they'll do, copy and paste. So what I'll do is I'll get the domain name of the address. That's my little trick. I'll take the domain name. And so like this place here, 2710 Gateway Oaks Drive, Suite 150N.com. So I'll do the same thing with Paracorp, whatever the address is, .com. And then in the website itself, I'll say, hey, I'm a process server in Sacramento and people hire me every day to serve Paracorp at that, 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 that address dot com. So if you need to serve that, 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 that at that address dot com, fill out the form below or call me, you know, text me or click check, click the chat box on my uh, my, um, you know, on the website and then you'll be able to contact with me. And then with that chat box off and it comes to my phone and then I can just chat back with them through my phone. And sometimes I'll forget to turn it off and be the middle of the night and I'm ding, I'm like, oh crap. And so somebody's wanting to chat on one of my websites in the middle of the night. So I, I, have to, I gotta remember every night to turn it off because they'll wake me up in the middle of the night wanting to chat about something. Got my Starbucks. And so now in California to become a process server, you have to register. So you go to your local recorder's office and you have to fill out a uh, application, pay a fee, get a process server bond. You got to get a live scan fingerprint and you get a, um, a little one little passport photos. And then that and then what will happen is once your live scan comes back, now you're a registered process server. Different states have different rules. So you have to research the rules for your specific state like Texas you have to take a training course from a certified course online for the process server. My course is not certified for Texas. I'm just tip, it's not certified for Texas. Um, and it's, but my course is really designed for people in California because it covers all the California forms and rules. But most pro process serving rules are basically the same everywhere. I mean, it's, what is a personal service? What is a substituted service? What is service by mail? You know, those are different types of serves. Service by publication. Those are different types of serves. So if you take my course, you learn all those for California rules, but they most likely, you just have to research to see if they apply in your other state. Okay. And so let's like you're, one of the people that was watching their process, they want to become a process server in Fairfield. So they go to the local recorder's office there, turn their application in and pay the fee, get fingerprinted and get the bond. 
and now you're a process server. Well, what do you do? Do you know what to do? I mean, you just have a process server, you're a process server. What do you do? Well, let's just say I came to you with some documents. I says, hey, I got these probate docs. Can you serve these for me? Well, how do you do it? Do you know where to go? I mean, do you know the paperwork to fill out? You probably don't. I learned the hard way, but I've done thousands of them now, so I know what to do. You take my course, you learn what to do. Okay, great. Or more, I appreciate that. Yeah, you take that course. And well, here's the thing. Just getting certified and taking the course is the easy part. The hardest part is getting the client. That's the hardest part, is getting those clients. So once you take that course and you get certified, I'll work with you a little bit to kind of guide you on what you got to do to get your own process server clients. Because you can get a job working for one of these larger companies and going out and serving them for them but they're only gonna pay you change. I mean, literally, they give you, I think it's 25 or $30 per serve and they want you to go six times? No, thank you. Okay, you're applying for the PI as well? Okay, great, great. And now, I'm a private investigator as well, but I make more money doing process serving because I focus my efforts on process serving because it's a, it's a lot easier. Literally, I go in, drop this off, fill out, a, fill out a proof of service form, and leave, and I'm done. Now, private investigation, you know, you say once you to investigate something, and you gotta write a long report, and you know, interview witnesses, and uh, you know, I mean, I was, cause when I, I used to be a police officer, and I left the force, and I was, was, when I got my private investigator license, and I was working for criminal defense attorneys. And so, you know, when you, go interview a witness, you gotta write a report, you gotta be ready to go to court and testify, you know, and and by the time you're done, you know, you got this big long stack of paper and you gotta remember stuff versus I can go drop these two off here and make $250 in like five minutes, literally. What are some of the best product prospects for process server work? Um, now you've got, he, this is what I do. I specialize PIs are better for process, skip trace though, help process server assume. Well, that's one of the, cause when you're a process server, some of these data companies will allow you the access to the skip trace software. So you, do, you really don't have to be a private investigator to get access. You can be a process server and then that's an extra service that you offer people when you're, you know, as a process server, skip tracing. So, you know, I, I offer that service as well for people to track people down to find a good address to serve them. Yeah, but you know, the one of the one of the person asked about the, um, um, you know, one of the services that you can offer as a process server or finding the clients is you can, you know, I don't know, some cities are small and it's easy to rank for that term process server in that area. But if you're in a large city with a lot of competition, it's better to find a niche. Hospital, government agency, local government agency, um, registered agent, you know, large company that gets served a lot. Finding where those go is the is one of the best ways to make a, a decent living, you know, as a process server. Because um, if you type in Sacramento process server, you're probably not gonna see my website on the first page. You won't, because I don't, my website doesn't rank that high to show up on the first page. But if you type in how to serve a subpoena to DMV, my website should show up on the first page. Or you type in how to serve a subpoena to Wells Fargo, my website should type it, which should type in on the first page. You know, or you type in how to serve, uh, you know, Paracorp, or a bunch of different companies that that serve there. Because li literally what I do is every time I go serve something, like I'm serving, what's this company here? CHBR Investments LLC. I'm gonna make a video. What are some of the better prospects process server? I had, had decent results with law firms. Okay, now law firms are, is a good idea as well, but I don't, myself reach out to law firms specifically law firms call me if that makes sense law firms call me they'll find they'll be searching on google 
find and they'll find one of my websites about serving documents. So that's how I get it because majority of my work comes from paralegals and legal assistants. Not very many attorneys that are actually calling me. It's who's working for the attorneys. The attorney says, hey, I need to get these documents served. And then I'll get a call or an email from a paralegal or their legal assistant. So you could go in your local area, door to door, passing out cards. You could do that. But I'd rather spend that time building a website, making content, or connecting with them on LinkedIn and then always making content on LinkedIn, because I don't know if you're following me on LinkedIn, but I post regularly on LinkedIn. I've got you know a couple thousand followers and that I'm connected with on LinkedIn. And so like if I'm on LinkedIn, I'll, I'll make a post, how to serve documents to CHBR Investments LLC in Sacramento. That'll be a post on LinkedIn. And I'll put a picture, because LinkedIn, Because LinkedIn, they don't like the videos as much. They'll rather read the text and look at an image. So I'll take it, I'll get a picture of something, you know, something that looks like maybe even if I go to Google and find one of their images that's, that I can reuse. And then um, I'll put that up and then in LinkedIn. But on YouTube, I'll have a YouTube video. I'll make a YouTube video. And this is exactly, you know what? I'm going to make the YouTube video right now live. We're going to do it live. I'm going to show you how I make a YouTube video. Okay, go to make on my cell phone, makes it a video. Who am I serving? Okay, we're making a live marketing video right now. You guys watching? Comment yes, I'm watching. If you're watching, this is how I make a living. Okay, here we go. CHBR Investments. Do you need to serve documents to CHBR Investment in Sacramento? My name is Lance and I'm a Sacramento process server and people hire me every day to serve documents to CHB Investments. So if you need to serve them, I can serve them at their registered agent, corporation service company, doing business as CSC Lawyers Incorporating Service in Sacramento on Gateway Elks Drive. There'll be a link either above or below this video. Click that link and then it'll be take you to my website where you fill out the contact form or it'll give you my phone number where you can call me and you can get your documents served. Okay, that's it. That's a video. I just made a video, a marketing video while I'm live with you. So then what I can, what I'll do is I will then upload that video onto my um, YouTube channel for process serving. I'll upload that video onto Facebook for my process serving Facebook page. And in the description, I'll put the name of the company that I'm serving and the registered agent. And then, no, in the title, I'll put the name of the company I'm serving and process server Sacramento. And in the description, I'll put the name, this registered agent in there as well, and the address, and then a link to my website. And then I'll put hashtag with the name of the company with no spaces and then hashtag with the registered agent with no spaces. Okay, so I'll put that out on my, my website. Then when I get home, then I'll write an article and put it on LinkedIn, which is, the, when I'm saying write an article, I'm not talking about 500 words, it's probably 30 words. Would basically, I could just take a transcript of what I just said and then use that as the content for the post or the article and I put that on my website and I put it on LinkedIn. And I do that every, you try to do that every day. And I, you know, fall behind sometimes because I'm so busy, but that's how you market your business for your process service so you can get your own clients. And you, but and what I'm calling it is documenting my journey. Just every day I go serve something, I make a video, you know, let's see what that video looks like. I make a video every time I go serve something. I make a video. And then I'll put that video online. And then people will hire me for that. Let me see. Plan. 
people hire me every day to serve documents to CHB Investments. So if you need to serve them, I can serve them at their registered agent, corporation service company, doing business as CSC Lawyers Incorporating Service, Sacramento, on Gateway Oaks Drive. There will be a link either above or below this video. Click that link and then it will take you to my website where you fill out the contact form or get my phone number where you can call me and you can get your documents served. That's it. That's how I make, I make a marketing video. Quick, easy. Quick and easy. Um, and then, now here's another little secret trick. Secret trick. How many web, how many YouTube channels do I have? Multiple YouTube channels. Okay, I got multiple YouTube channels. What if I uploaded that video to multiple YouTube channels. Now, you can't upload the exact same video. It's gotta be different. So, you just go to your video editing software and add some music that YouTube will allow to each video that's different. And now you upload that into each software, each each YouTube channel. So you've taken that video and you've put it, you've spread it across the, the, the web a little bit. That's a little trick is you have multiple YouTube channels, put that content on multiple channels, and then uh, do I have a general rate for what? Let me see here, live chat. Hold on. Do I have a general rate for services or rate structure for paralegals or other companies? Um, I charge them all the same. There's no difference between the two. My rate to serve the registered agent, which is just one trip, is $125. And that gets you up to 25 pages. After that, you ch I charge a little more. And then for routines, for not going here, where you get three attempts is 150. For root, like small claims, restraining orders is 250. Um, unlawful detainers is 200. Those are my basic rates. Um, I don't, and then it does, let's say you had 10 of them going here. I'm, I would do them for $75 each because it's just a one trip. But that, but putting that, putting that, then back to the video, put that video on multiple platforms. And then if you have a Vimeo, you can put that video on Vimeo. Um, you can put that video on Facebook, that same video on your Facebook page as well. And then in, in the descriptions, you have the description. What I do if, is, um, what I'll do is I'll change the content for each video, the written part, the title and description, I'll change it around. And then each each uh, YouTube channel has its own website that's assigned to it. So then in the description, I'll put a link to that website so I don't have the same website coming from different channels, it goes to a different website. That's how I kind of structure it that way. Because the goal, is to take over Google. The goal is to take over Google. I'm gonna do a quick Google search and we'll see. Let's see, I'm gonna say, how to serve Wells Fargo. How to serve Wells Fargo Bank. We're gonna go to videos. Okay. I'm gonna show you first. How to serve Wells Fargo Bank. Who's that on the top? You see that? Who's that on the top? That look like, does it look like this? That's mine right there, that's mine. That's The second one is mine. The third one is mine. That This one here is mine. I can't see that one, what's that? That's somebody else. This is mine, this is mine. That's Wells Fargo. I get, I'm get. i here just about four to six times a week serving Wells Fargo. And we can do this again with uh, Airbnb. Number two is me. Okay. That's, you know, so, and, but that's the whole point is, is the more content you put online, 
it, it's easier to get the get your clients from from come you know from your your online content. Let's see here. How do I get the chat to show up? Okay. And so um, that's about. Anybody got any questions? Any questions about? Becoming a process server or how to serve documents or anything like that? Post your questions because I'm here. This is a live question and answer session now. So, because we, we got to go in here and serve a uh, family trust documents on Vanguard and then a complaint and summons on CHBR Investments LLC to their registered agent, corporation service company doing business as CSC Lawyers Incorporating Service in Sacramento. In this place, you, if you watch some of my other videos, you can see um, you have to press a button and they let you in and then they've got a pigeonhole, you drop it. Um, okay, great. You drop it in a the box, they go on the little computer, log in that you was there and then you write down the, the name of the person that was at the front and they're gonna be on the list and then you leave. That's basically it. So, I did try a printer in my car. At one time, I did try it. It just didn't work out for me. It just didn't work. I mean, I don't know if I had the wrong printer. I ended up actually taking it back because it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. I mean, some people, there's because at this location, they get served a lot every day there are some process servers here that have printers in their cars. I just didn't do it. Um, if I'm out in the field, what I'll do is just forward it over. Some aggressive shirts. Okay, we'll do that in a sec. I'll forward it over to Fit, well, you know, FedEx Print and Go, and then just it's only a couple miles away. Go print them and then be back. It's quick and easy. Um, yeah. Now, sometimes you know, as a process server, you want to know about you know. Is anybody aggressive or you know things like that most of the time not most of the time not the only time I thought I was gonna get in this a mess is because I lied literally I lied to get somebody to show up and they showed up and I because basically what it was is I was serving a business and the business was closed they was no longer there so I found the phone number to the owner I says hey this is John I live down the street I got some mail delivered and I wanted to drop it off to you here at the business. And he says, okay, and he shows up. Well, I didn't know this at the time, but somebody actually stole some of their mail and he thought I had something to do with it. So he got all aggressive and everything at first until he figured out who I was. <coughs> and then um, I was able, you know, just to serve the documents to him. And so that was basically the only time I, you know, where, um, I, I was kind of worried that something was going to go down. Um, but every now and then you get people that just won't open the door. You know, I've had people run from me. Literally, this is this is a funny story. This is a funny story. I go to serve, I think it was a small claims. You get there, I knock on the door. He don't come to the door. He goes to the window to the side of the door. And I go, yeah, I'm a process server. I got some documents for you. Go away, get off my porch. Go away, I'm not opening the door, okay. So I log it in my computer, I mean my, my laptop, my um, software, no big deal. And cause, cause there's no guarantee I'm gonna serve it. This is, you're, they're paying for the attempts. So I go back a couple days later, do the same thing. He's hollering at me through the window, go away, get off my property. Okay, whatever, no big deal. So the last time I, cause they get three attempts. So the last time I was driving towards his house and I see a, 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 a van parked in front and it's an alarm company and there's there's two people standing out front i was like oh wow he the alarm company's got him outside so i drove around the block and then parked about four houses away where he couldn't see me and got out of my car and just kind of walked down the sidewalk and then snuck up not really i kind of walked up his driveway so he couldn't really see what was going on and then i came around the corner and his eyes got all big and he takes off running to the house so I run right after him and I took the documents and just as he's closing the door, I threw them. <laughs> I dropped them at his feet, didn't throw them. I just kind of dropped them at his feet and they closed in the door. So legally he was served and uh, that was a kind of a funny one because literally the alarm company got him to open the door. 
and he was outside out front um, and I was able to just get him into the door. And then here's another story that's kind of funny. Um, I was hired, well, here's what it, a person was walking their dog and a pit bull attacked him, the dog. The dog had medical bills, so they sued the, the pit bull owner in small claims court. So they needed somebody to serve the documents. So they found me online. And so they gave me the documents, gave me the address of the house. And I'm like, okay, well, it's a pit bull, attack the dog. I gotta kind of be cautious a little bit, you know, when I go up there. So I get to the door and they've got a security door. Oh, one of the dang turkeys is out here. Okay, don't they know it's turkey season? <laughs> I'm not even gonna mess with the phone because it'll mess it up. So, and but the security door is like flimsy. I took your course and, and okay, good, 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 good. Okay, great. Somebody took my course and they're making good money. I like that. Take my course. You can sign up for it here, here in TikTok up in there. Here is down in the description a link to my course. But this will be my last story I tell for today. So I get to the door. And it's got a secure one of those security doors on it and then the interior wooden door but the security door is like flimsy and it's not really latched it's not even closed it's like oh crap you know if these dogs come they're gonna be coming right out after me so what i did is i basically put my foot on the security door just put my foot on it so that it can't open and then i knocked on the door and then the lady the lady i'm serving opens the door to see who it is as hey i'm lance i'm a process server i got some documents and she and about but while i'm knocking i hear these dogs bark a big dog and a little dog barking it's funny and so she, who is it i was like lance it's lance i'm a process server so she opens the door to see it's me and then she tries to close it she closes the interior door and i hadn't served her yet but when she closed the interior door, a little chihuahua ran out. So she had a chihuahua pinned in between the doors. It was, it was a chihuahua, one of the chihuahua was pinned in between the doors. And so I was like, well, she gonna have to let the dog, she got to open the door to get the chihuahua back in. So I got my stuff ready. This time I had it ready. So when she opened that door, I basically, um, cause that pit bull was trying to get out too. So I was like, I'm gonna keep my foot on it. But I, she opened that door. I had them documents ready. So as soon as she opened that door, I was like, whoop, dropped it in there and served her that way. And then the chihuahua ran back in. But yeah, that was a funny story. That day, I, The dog was trapped in between the two doors. <laughs> she closed the dog in the doors. Yeah, that was funny. But yeah, so if you want the free ebook on how to become a process server in the description on YouTube, I don't know if it's below or above, I'll give you a free ebook. I normally sell it on Amazon, but I'm giving it away for free um, because this is a, an excellent business opportunity that you can get into. It's a recession proof business. Don't matter what the economy is doing. People are going to court. I don't care what it is. And you got all kinds of court cases, small claims, divorce, family law. Okay. You use Manel. Yep. Okay, divorce, family law, you got all kinds of cases being filed every day and all those cases have to be served. And each one could be $100, $200, depending on what you charge to do it. You know, so why wouldn't you want to get into this industry? It's, you know, and, 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 I, and if you're looking to get some training, I've got a course that I teach you online how to become a process server. In that description, or if you're here on TikTok, up there, up there in, the, in my bio, there's a course where you can, and you can learn how to become a process server online and you can get paid to deliver legal papers. Literally, there's always a need for it, no matter what the economy's doing. You know, I mean, today I'm at, but I'm waiting. I done two of them earlier at 150 a pop and I got two here at 125 a pop for today. How much, I mean, literally. Tomorrow I've already got four at 125 a pop just for here how hard is that and wednesday i'm i'm going turkey hunting in the morning so whatever's coming in i'm gonna do it in the afternoon 
And it, usually I'll come here right after I go fishing and hunting or fishing. I'll just bring the documents with me and come here afterwards and drop them off. You know, that's one of the benefits of working for yourself. You can do whatever you want to do, how you want to do it. And so if you want to sign up for my course, then click that link. Anybody got any questions? Any questions anywhere? Okay, well, you know, you guys have a great day. If you could like this video and subscribe to my channel or follow me on TikTok because I'm broadcasting on two things. Um, because I, I'm, I'm a, I like to go live stream multiple times. Here, I'm gonna show you this turkey. Can y'all see this turkey? Look at that. Don't you know on Wednesday, if you out where I'm going, you fair game. Is it working? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys have a peace. Good luck. Have, have a good day, everybody. Let's get this money. Get this money.